بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب Whoever honors the symbols of Allah this leads to the piety of hearts so this adab is a very important ingredient in deen whether a person is going to these mubarak places then he is fortunate or not but adab and respect will make a person so that will start from here from now where for the bait Allah if you're going to the house of Allah you are prepared for his house so when we look our eyes need to be used in halal avenues from now we need to make a niyat this eye will not look at haram will not go onto those websites those platforms which will contaminate my eyes and effectively darken my heart. Likewise, social media platforms, movies, etc., etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces Himself, the entire Quran. So these eyes should be looking at the Quran. They should be looking at the Qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu yad'u ila daris salam. Allah is inviting to Jannah, Allah is inviting to His worship, Allah is inviting to His recognition. أَفَلَا يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُسِبَتْ Look, look at the mountains, look at the camels, look at the skies. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ So many signs, one sign upon another. لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لِأُولِي النُّهَا لِأُولِي الْأَبْصَارِ For those who have vision who want to find Allah. Likewise the ears to hear good, the tongue to speak about the greatness of Allah. Mawlana Yusra Ablali used to say that the mention of the creation ye bimari hai, this is the sickness, this is the malady. What's the remedy to speak about the Khaliq? So we've got this inchoate belief system and to solve the spiritual maladies, the remedy is to speak about Allah. And he used to say, we don't tell people to go in Allah's path, to strive in the path of Allah, in da'wah, in tabligh, and to speak about the greatness because there's some scheme, so there's some planning, there's some plotting. No, this is the haq of Allah, this is the right of Allah that uh, to speak about the greatness of Allah. So somebody pride themselves going to a senior, but does a senior pride themselves about seeing you? I'm proud that I'm going to the Baytullah, but is Allah proud and happy to see me? I'm happy to go to Madinah al Munawwarah to make a ziyarah of the Rada Athar for the mulaqat with the Nabi of Allah but is he happy with my meeting? I'm happy to go meet him but is he happy to meet me? So we have to study the life of uh, Nabi Ali salatu salam. we need to read seerah, we need to read sunnah, we need to see what sacrifices were made for this ummah. What did my Nabi do for me? What am I doing for him? What am I doing for this deen? See the beloveds that became the beloveds. Sahaba, awliya. What did they do? How did they react? What made them beloved? And I ne- what I need to do to become beloved? Ash'ar, Anashid, Qasida, Burda. Such a kitab, the Sufis, the Mufassirin, scholars of Quran, Mahaddithin, Hadith scholars, Fuqaha, Juras. Different ulama have highlighted the importance of this kitab. 
Malana Hussein Ahmed Madani Rahmatullahi used to say that our elders used to encourage their murids to recite Qasidatul Burda and Dalail al Khairat. Malana Qasim Nanati Malana Rashid Ahmed Gangway used to give permission for people to read these kitabs. The father of Sheikh Al Hind, Malana Dhul Fiqar Ali, wrote a, a commentary. On, on, on these uh, poems and the praises of Nabi alayhi salam. Mawlana Shabri Talmi Mujadim also had a special attachment to these ashar, these poems. And uh, in his kitab Nashr al Tib, he highlighted uh, the importance of these poems. Mawlana Ilyas used to say that the ulama should study the burda uh, with honor and respect. And you will create taluk with Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. So, great importance by our kabir, by our mashayikh were given to these, uh, this poem. And uh, the, it's called burda, the, the, the shawl, what, what was the, the story behind it. So this blessed shawl of Nabi alayhi salam was gifted to two people on Yarin poems in his praises. One was Ka'ab ibn Zuhair who Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam handed his shawl. So in Tariq al-Khulafa Alama Suyuti has mentioned that when Ka'ab recited to Nabi alayhi salam his Qasida, Nabi alayhi salam bestowed him with this Mubarak shawl. And it was in the era of Hazrat Muawiyah who wrote to Ka'ab to sell him this cloak for 10,000 dirhams, but he wasn't ready after he passed away. His son Uqba agreed to sell it for 20,000 dirhams. And the shawl continued amongst the Khulafa of the Banu Umayyah, Banu Abbas. They used to wear it on the Eid occasion. al Masuyuti has mentioned that uh, it went missing the fall of Baghdad during the invasion of the Tatars. Other scholars have said that uh, it co continued in the Abbasi Khilafat Mutawakkil to Sultan, the Ottoman Sultan, Sultan Salim Awal. And uh, it was preserved in Istanbul in the time of Sultan Majid Khan Awal, which is around 1849 was moved to the masjid in Istanbul where they built a special place Khirqa Sharif masjid was named after that and uh, it was placed in uh, an embroidered box in the top copy palace museum in Istanbul so Alama Busayri himself was uh, afflicted with a stroke his half body was paralyzed. There was no hope of recovery, and so he wrote Ash'ar in praises of Nabi alayhi salam and he made dua to Allah to cure him. So while he was making dua, he fell asleep. He dreamt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam who had come and rubbed his Mubarak hands over his body and he placed, uh, uh, after rubbing his hands over his body, he placed this Mubarak shawl on him and when he opened his eyes he felt that his body could move so he stood up and he left the house there's a time of Fajr approaching he made wudu went to the masjid and he saw a, a, a dervish who asked me to recite these ash'ar which I read that night so I read the first Line and he said, I saw in a dream this Ash'ar being read to the Nabi of Allah who moved to and fro like a plant that is moving with the wind. So showing the mark of praise and happiness. Somebody is very happy, then they, they, they rock, they, they move to and fro out of elation. So the Azmat just so much love they had for the Nabi of Allah. So these places that we are going to, we need to be very aware of where we are going to, to who we are going to. It is not just fulfilling a, a ritual and a formality. 
Shah Abdul Qadir Raipur Rahmatullahi whenever he used to go to Munin Munawara he used to tell the people the last stage of the journey that when you see the Rawdha tell me then from there he would remove his shoes walk barefoot and recite durood not not doing anything else remaining silent he should tell his murids that uh, also you start reciting durood and just concentrate on where you are going to so uh, even just the fact that the azmat of this place they had so much azmat that one madni rahmatullah planted a Acacia tree in Darlum Dioband and people wanted to know what is the reason there was no fruits, no flowers, it didn't give any fragrant smell, it did not add any beauty to the garden. So after investigation it was established that he sat under this tree and he wanted to because Nabi Salam sat under the Acacia tree and taken the pledge of allegiance from Saba which was better Ridwan, he in memory of this incident and in honor of the tree that was fortunate to be in the company of the Nabi of Allah, he planted that tree. So what azmat, what adab, what respect, what etiquette they had. Hazrat Mawlana Rashid Ahmad Gangoye, he owned a green piece from the cloth of the Ghilaf of the Hujra Sharif. So uh, when people, visitors used to come then he would present it, he would open the box with his hands, remove the ghilaf, place it on his eyes, then place it on the heads of people. If anybody brought kajur from Medina to Munora, he would keep this kajur with great honor and would keep it for khas special gatherings. Once he received some kajur and he said distribute this amongst our close companions after dividing them, so it was very small portions. So the students said, but Ustad, these are small portions, how can you even give this as a gift? Malana became very upset. He said, these are the blessings, the tabarrukat of Madinatul Munawara. It's a ni'mat of Allah and it can never be insignificant. So uh, even the seeds from the kajur of Madina Munawara, he wouldn't throw it away, allow it to be just thrown in the dustbin, etc. But uh, he would respect it and he would advise others also that grind these seeds and utilize the powder for they are beneficial, they are from Medina to Munawara. Somebody came and had handed, handed Hazrat some dust from the Hujra Sharif. So he would uh, take the dust, he put it in his Kuhul Antimony container and daily after Isha it was habit to apply this Surma. So uh, having the adab, the etiquettes and the azmat is very important. When uh, Hujjatul Islam on Qasim Nanotwi went for Hajj, then uh, he never wore any shoes in the Mubarak city of Medina Munora and his Sati companion Hakim Mansur Ali Khan once uh, describing this situation of Mawlana said that when we came closer to Medina Munora and when we could see the roba, Maulana removed his shoes, placed them under his arms and he started walking barefoot. And uh, that's how he reached the haram. And likewise, he never mounted the camel, although he had the conveyance and his feet were injured, he got pricked, blood began flowing from his feet as he knocked the rocks, the, rocks, the stones, etc. And uh, he used to say, how can Qasim Nanotwi walk with shoes on that ground which the beloved of Allah treaded? How can Qasim walk with shoes on that ground which the beloved of Allah treaded? So uh, adab and respect. Thus respect has its consequences. Respect has its benefits. This respect has its consequences. So, uh, and this has it, Mawlana Madni explained an incident of a Haji Sab who was in Medina to Munawara and he consumed some yogurt, dai. It's 
So he said, oh, it's very bitter, it's very sour. And he showed this like, that evening he seen, made ziyarat of Nabi alayhi salam and he addressed him saying, when the day, the yogurt of Medina Munawara is sour, why have you come here? Go from here, go from here. Rebuking him and instructing him to leave the Mubarak city. So he woke up, he was afraid and, 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 and scared. He asked the ulama what should be done. She said, go to the grave of Azad Hamza radiallahu an, and make a dua there. Maybe Allah will have mercy on you. So he went to the qabr crying, he made a lot of dua. And that night he saw Hazrat Hamza radiallahu an, in a dream. who instructed him, please leave Medina Munawara. Otherwise there is fear that your Iman may be snatched away. So after narrating this incident, Hazrat Madni used to say, never ever take out any faults of any item in Medina Munawara. In fact, any difficulty and discomfort should be a source of comfort, pleasure and ecstasy. So, disrespect has its consequences. Adab is very important. So, now we need to start making effort on, on, on practicing Sunnah, see how our lives can change and be hopeful for Allah that Allah will accept a, a, a person who was a resident of Makkah used to perform Hajj every year until his 70th Hajj. Every time he entered the Haram and he said Labbaik, a reply used to come La Labbaik, your Labbaik is not accepted. It was a youngster one day, same thing happens. The person said, Oh uncle, a cry of La Labbaik cry of La Labbaik. Solomon said, Oh son, did you hear that? The young man said, Yes, I also heard it. So the old man started crying and said, Oh son, for 70 years now I've heard that same reply again and again. So the youngster said, But uncle, why should you put yourself in so much difficulty when you know it's not accepted? He said, O oh son, on which door can I knock except Allah's? Where can I go? It's my duty to continue begging. If Allah wills, He will accept. If He desires, He will reject. But a servant cannot flee from the door. A slave cannot run away from his master. No matter what the reason, you are a slave and you are subservient should stay there through thick and thin, no matter what. Then he started crying. The tears covered his chest. And again he cried, Labbaik, Labbaik. And then the voice from the unseen came that now we have accepted your presence here. We have accepted your presence here. Oh uncle, did you hear that reply? He said, yes, I've also heard it. Started crying more out of elation and his rule left like that. His rule left in that condition. What do we cry for in dunya? What do we value? What do we, who do we respect? Why do we respect them? So a person should start now there's no reason for any excuse. So we free ourselves. On the Yaima Hajj, we know we're going for Hajj, we take leave, but we don't take off before that. We don't dedicate time daily. So it needs a full 360 degree turn. There was a man who drained all the water from the swimming pool. He was upset. Why did you take out all the water? You're wasting water. So the man said, you know what, I, 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 I want to, it was a part of my bucket list to, 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 to become a, a, a diver, I want to practice diving. But I don't know how to swim, so I took out all the water. I don't know how to swim. I took out all the water. Not gonna happen. So we say we're going for Hajj, we're becoming Hajj Sab. But if we don't make a fierce law, we don't make a decision between ourselves and Allah. Only Allah can accept. We are hopeful from Allah. May Allah accept the Hajj of one and all. Shaitan is there. The fact that he knows a person is going to this Mubarak places for Umrah, for Hajj. 
He's going to do everything in his power. There's a youngster playing in the street and by mistake, accidentally swallowed a coin, got stuck in his throat. The boy was choking, the mother ran, scrammed for help. Nobody was there on the street, they intervened, did whatever he needed to do. The boy coughed up the coin. So he looked like he was a professional. So the mother said, thank you so much, doctor. I don't know how to thank you. I'm not a doctor. I work for the Internal Revenue Service. I'm the taxman. So I need to get money out of you. I'll get it. <laughs> Even if it's stuck in your throat. Shaitan is like that. If he needs to extort, he'll do whatever needs to be done to make sure a person will not take maximum benefit. So we have to see Niyat already now, what I'm going to do and, 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 and be focused on, 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 on prioritizing, on, on, on seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of uh, giving us tawfiq to execute this great amal, how it should be done. The amal for today is that we are going to those places we should bear it with difficulties, with hardships, no matter what. I'm going for my Islam and this situation is for my Islam. Allah is going to watch my reaction. La yasbiru, no person from my followers who bears patiently the hardships. وَشِدَّتِهَا أَحَدٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِي إِلَّا كُنْتُ لَهُ شَفِيعًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ شَهِيدًا There's difficulty in Madinatul Munawwara except I will intercede on their behalf, I will bear testimony on their behalf. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ